Once the simulation of your power system is complete, its results will be displayed as a scale for each simulation parameter. If any of the results exceed the defined limit, its scale will be filled with red color, indicating an error and possible risk to your PCB. Clicking the View Report button on a circuit that has a violation will display a description of the found error, its risk if it is ignored, and possible ways to fix it in your project. This set of tips is unique for each type of violation, and will display exactly the relevant information that will help you get rid of the violation. Approaches to fixing violations are individual, and depend on the type of error. You can use the approach that is more appropriate for your layout, or you can combine some of the solutions to get the best results. Voltage drop errors are caused by too much voltage loss when current flows through conductors, due to which the ICs may not get the right voltage and end up not working on the finished PCB. Using the scope or the slider element in the heat map tab, you can adjust the heat map for easier operation or processing of the results. About working with this panel, see the separate video for more details. Voltage drop is directly related to the cross section and length of your conductor. The smaller the cross section and the longer the length, the higher its resistance will be, and the greater the loss will be. Shortening the conductor can reduce internal resistance, thereby reducing losses. Another key way to correct this violation is to increase the width or height of the conductor, similarly reducing the internal resistance. After changing the layout, measurements show the drop value has decreased several times, and the problem is solved. However, if in your case applying these approaches did not help get rid of the violation, you can compensate for the output voltage level on the VRM if it supports this feature. By increasing the output voltage, the consuming IC will receive the correct power considering the losses. But please note that this step will directly affect all the other components in the circuit, and it is recommended to consult the datasheets of all of these components for voltage thresholds before doing so. Current density errors are related to the amount of current load flowing through the cross-section of your conductor. High consumption components require a larger conductor cross-section to operate reliably, and if the current density value of the sections of the board is high enough, it can cause the board to overheat, delaminate, or even burn through. When analyzing the current density heat map, it is recommended to turn off the logarithmic scale for the clear reading of the results. The highest current densities are located in the tightest parts of your conductor, and the key approach to correcting this violation is to increase the conductor cross-section. To reduce the current density, it is first recommended to maximize the width of the conductor in narrow places, such as fan-out areas. Use a heat map to localize bends or bottlenecks, and widen the conductor, increasing its cross-section. If this step did not help to reduce the value to an acceptable level, one way to solve this problem would be to use the thicker copper foil in your project. But keep in mind that changing the stack will affect the impedance, and this change will need to be taken into account for the corresponding tracks. Another way to reduce current density is to duplicate loaded conductors onto adjacent layers. It is recommended to place highly loaded supply circuits on the external layers where the conductor thickness is increased by plating, thereby further reducing the current density. If none of the methods helped, one of the ways to solve this problem could be to replace the high consumption chip with a more energy efficient analog. This measure is the most difficult, but it can significantly reduce the current density on the board. The last type of error is related to the maximum allowable current in the VIA, exceeding which causes the VIA to burn out and a complete loss of connection in the power circuit. Localization of these errors is done with the violation section with a click, after which the camera will bring the violating VIA closer. The larger the VIA is, the more current it can handle, so the main step for improving should be to increase the VIA diameter and annular ring at the violating VIA. In addition, you can unload the VIA by reducing the current load on it. This is quite easy to do by placing an additional VIA next to the loaded one, because in this way the load will be divided between them, reducing the current value times over. So in this way, step by step, all violations should be corrected, bringing your PCB to an acceptable level of safety.